90 degree V-twin transverse mounted air cooled. If Steve McQueen, the king of cool, were alive today, he'd be riding this. Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, cause any day one can be on two wheels is a beautiful day. And sorry, I apologize for that intro. I couldn't resist. <laughs> of course, look what I'm on. Today we ride the Moto Guzzi V7 updated in 21. Many updates, let's just do a top five list, shall we? The motor's bigger, frame stiffer up here by the uh, um, triple clamp uh, also for that extra power of the motor some several things here these rear springs are leaned a little more forward and stronger springs and more progressive and also longer more travel in the rear third the swing arm was also beefed up to handle that extra power and also the shaft drive and also this two-tier seat so that your passenger is now a little bit higher instead of the flat bench as before. All right, guys, let's get on down the road and see if these changes have made an impact on the overall of this bike. All right, guys, let's get into the numbers, shall we? Let's come around here and take a look at this bad boy. Look at this motor, will you? Oh, yeah, that's that's the new 853cc motor from the 744cc motor. And it went from 52 to 65 ponies. Yeah, and the Newton meter, 60 to 73. So quite a jump there, a nice jump for an all air cooled, not even oil cooled motor. So good job there, Guzzi, with a hundred, a little over a hundred cc increase, but then a significant increase in power too. Now with this motor and transmission, you know when you shift, of course, it's a, it's a Guzzi. When it shifts, it clunks like a normal Guzzi. That's what they're going to do. You know you shift when you shift. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. You know. Oh yeah, you can feel that motor pull right there. Oh yeah. And yeah, you can quick shift this thing, no problem. This motor, right at three, it's a little thumpy. But then once you get it to three and a half, and then all the way to seven, it's a dream. The shakes. Well, uh, more the, the shanks more get ironed out at around four and a half, but uh, by five grand they're just uh, this motor sings. Up, oh, yep, white van, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, and the transmission, uh, it's clunky. It's BMW boxer clunky, well, just like the previous gen too. It's uh, yeah, that's just. A Moto Guzzi. When you shift, you know you shift, and you got to take the time to shift. Just like everything on this bike, that's the way it's supposed to be. Take the time to do everything, and once you get used to that mentality, this powertrain is getting two thumbs way, way up. Boom, boom. Yeah, no questions. But now, if you want to ride this bike aggressively. Okay, then a thumb, one thumb up. But that's not the purpose of the bike. If, if you buy this bike with the intention to ride it aggressively, you've missed the point. Let's come up to the KYBs here. 40 millimeter diameter, 130 millimeter of travel. Look at the gators here, yeah. What do you notice is missing on this side though? 
Mm -hmm. Only a single disc on the other side, 320 mil with four piston Brembo's on the other side. But those are axi axially mounted. See the mounts there, it's not back here. So that I could feel a little bit there and also it's a axial mount here too. It's not a radio. So that I did notice a little bit. That's where at the beginning the, the feel was a little vague and then it came on. On the rear here, the suspension, look at this. They increased this to 120 mils of travel uh, and put on bigger springs here and they're more progressive. And it's because the travel used to be 80 mils, now it's 120. So thank you, Gucci, for increasing that to take on that extra power and also give us a little bit of a smoother ride. And on the back here, 260s with a two piston down there. Uh, that was okay. How is this on the street? This extra rigidity, this 10%. Rigidity. I think I do feel that with the uh, security while leaned over in a corner like this corner here. I was like, oh yeah, you can just dip into this no problem with one hand even. Uh, you feel safe and secure even on this uh, imperfect country road that I'm going down. And by the way, this is the same road I took the previous review three years ago of the V7 3 Gen 3 that I was riding down, took it down this road here. Now the front brakes, still the same, yeah, oh yeah, Brembles, uh, but they're axial mounted and the clutch lever is axial mounted too, so you feel that. Uh, but uh, it's a little vague at first and then you get the feel. Uh, the rear brake though, uh, it feels like a plank. I don't know what happened in Moto Guzzi between the last gen and this gen. If you mess something up there or what, I don't know. You tell me. And uh, throw her over. Oh, this bike loves to lean in to a corner. No problem. Uh, loves to lean in and then pull back out of the corner. It loves everything. If I had to describe the handling of this bike, it's very neutral. It doesn't want to lean over all the time and it doesn't want to just go straight it's pretty neutral it'll take any suggestion you give it and it'll say okay let's go that's this bike summing it up with these this chassis so the chassis I think I gave it two thumbs up before again boom boom two thumbs again yeah let's continue on with the rest of this bike guys you can see here this uh, bobbed fender is a little bit shorter than the previous gen. That's also a change. Uh, this seat is now the dual height seat, so the passenger is a little bit higher. But it went from 770 mils to 780 mils, so an increase of 10 millimeter. Tank still 21 liters, that's fine. Filled up, it weighs 218 kilos. That's an increase of nine kilos. Well, because of the beefier motor, beefier swing arm, beefier shaft gears, beefier rear suspension, and also beefier front frame. So you can almost justify that nine kilos with that information. How does this feel in town? I cannot tell that it had actually gained nine kilos in weight. It is pretty, it still feels pretty light and nimble. <laughs> Although I think the front forks are a little bit stiffer than the previous model. But as far as the throttle map is, spot on. Oh, nice. Okay, if you want to get technical, there is just, uh, I'm nitpicking, there is just a little bit, but it's not. It's more of a driveline lash rather than a problem with the mapping. That's to be honest. I'm nitpicking here, guys. It's, there's nothing to complain about, to be quite honest with you, as far as this mapping. And this uh, seems like it, you could 
do some serious city commuting with this bike. Yeah, really. I wouldn't mind doing a commuter, having this as my daily commute. Because with, with a daily commuter, you want to be relaxed to and from work. Ah, you know what? Relax me on the way to work and relax me on the way home from work. Perfect. That's a great definition of a city commuter. All right, guys, now let's go up to the controls as I turn on the daytime running lights. Yeah, look at that. That is cool. Huh. Uh, you have your standard controls here and here, but listen to this. Yeah, that sounds great. Good tactile feel and noise. Nice solid piece of work here, Moto Guzzi, with the hand controls. Now, what do you notice here? Yeah, it's a single dial and it's 100% digital here and you can control what you want to read here, down here also. So, Moto Guzzi managed to go digital and still look analog almost. Now, if you do want the dual um, dials, then you have to get the special. The special has the dual dials on it. So that's the only difference between this and the special, the stone. And the special also has your chromed out exhaust system, other aluminum, brushed aluminum accents on the motor, and, and, and in a few other places too. But coming back to this digital display, it works. I like it. They even managed to get the little wings coming off here with the turret signals. <laughs> yeah, good job on the on the on the uh, LCD Moto Guzzi and giving that to us. All right, guys. Overall, two thumbs up on this bike. Uh, it's it's a roadster. It's a middleweight roadster with a retro feel, and it takes you back 50 years to 1967 is when they first started making this original V7 motor. Yeah, of course, it was a lot smaller then. All right, guys, as always, ride safe. That's the most important on the list, guys, ride safe. And number two, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care, guys. Cheers.